Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this webinar, Back to School Support and Resources for Reveal Map 6 to 12. My name is Sarah Shuja, and I'm a marketing manager at McGraw-Hill based in Dubai. Before we go on any further, let's just check if the audio connection is working all right. So on the screen, on the same screen that you're looking at on the right side, you'll see a hand icon. It should appear just below your name. Can you please click on the icon if you can hear my voice? Excellent. Okay, I see a lot of hands going up, so we're sorted there. I'll just give you a brief overview of the session today. This is an implementation training session for Reveal Map 6 to 12. So if you're teaching grades 6 to 12 and are using Reveal Map in the upcoming academic year, um, it's great that you're attending this session. You'll learn about teaching strategies to redesign your classroom. And we are actually delighted to have Christy Raffaire with us today. It's 6 a.m. where Christy is joining us. So thank you, Christy. It's early morning for you. Thank you for joining us. You've got my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me today. Thank you so much. Uh, you, I have my colleagues as moderators today, Afsana and Nasir. Uh, we will be looking after question answers and chat box. So if you have any questions for Christy, please let us know in the Q&A box that's on the right side. And if you'd like to engage with the presenter or if you want to ask us anything, anything, any comment, you can chat. You can write that in the chat box. And just a bit of a background on Christy. Christy is a math curriculum specialist with McGraw-Hill. Uh, she has an experience of 25 years in education. Christy has conducted numerous professional development workshops, and she's also a certified trainer of Dyna Zayek Foldables. In the current capacity, she does present K-12 math. In addition, she conducts a lot of workshops in elementary, middle school, and high. I'm just going now that's all for Christy, and Christy will take over after my colleague Afsana has done with the housekeeping slides. So I'm just going to pass over to Afsana to go over a few slides, and then we can begin with the presentation. Thank you, everyone. Over to you, Afsana. Thank you, Sarish. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Perfect. Um, so just before we begin, as Sarish mentioned, I will just cover off a bit of housekeeping just to ensure that the experience for you during the webinar today is as seamless as possible. Um, so we'll start with audio. So if you're experiencing any audio issues during the call today and you're using your computer call-in, I would recommend actually disconnecting from the computer um, and using your phone and dialing in instead, which can be done by disconnecting using the audio sign and then um, connecting using your phone instead by calling in. Um, of course, if your computer connection is fine, do not worry about that either. Um, in terms of just other connectivity issues that could occur, so if you have anyone who's either on Netflix, YouTube, or any gaming platforms that could impact the bandwidth in your home or in the internet place that you're using, that's just to bear that in mind as well. However, if you do miss anything, of course, we are recording the session today and we will be circulating this recording as well with you via email um, within a week. And that email will, of course, include the certificate as well for joining us today. There will be a Q&A at the end as well with Christy, and as Sarah mentioned, if you do have any questions for Christy, um, just please use the Q&A box and the chat box on the side. And um, we have muted you just because of the way the webinar has been set up, but if you have any comments, questions, just general queries, please just drop them into the Q&A and the chat box, and that also includes any technical issues you may be experiencing. Um, if you just message me priority in the chat box, I can assist you as well there. Okay, Christy, I'm going to pass over to you now. Okay, thank you. And now... And do you see my screen? Not yet. Um, not yet, no. Okay, let's see. Yes, we can see your screen. Fantastic. All right. So welcome, everyone, and thank you so much for having me today. Um, it's my pleasure to share with you um, implementation training for Reveal Math 612. I, just for presentation purposes today, I'm going to let everyone know that I'll be using seventh grade as a, as a demonstration, but uh, this is 
straight through Algebra 2, all the, all the information that I give you on this today. So really the outcomes today is I want to make sure that you leave with a foundation and understanding of the reveal math, the lesson structure, the features within the lesson, and of course the print and digital material. Uh, with that being said, in the chat box, I believe we're going to put a file uh, to a Dropbox or to a OneDrive that you can go in. If you do not have um, print material, here's just a sample of some of our print material. So here is what the student edition looks like, and I'll refer to it, as well as here's the teacher's edition. So if you're just getting those, I'm going to give you a few minutes to maybe download Download those real quick. Um, if you're like me, sometimes you like just having that available to look at as we move through and talk about the material from McGraw-Hill. I know that wasn't a lot of time, but I just wanted to pause for a minute to give everyone a chance to click on the link. Um, I'm just going to move through and, and share some other information with you, too. If you do not have um, your own username and password, you can go to my.mheducation.com, and here is a demonstration username and password. Reveal Math Demo, MHE, and then the password is case sensitive, all lowercase, MHE 2020 Math. This is something I always suggest participants. Usually we have our cell phones with us. This is a great thing to take a picture of so that you kind of have that in your back pocket if you need it um, as you're moving through the school year. Sometimes, you know, we get kicked out of our own login, maybe at school for some reason or for something. So this is just something good to have um, with you. Okay. So basically, our agenda was, was to talk about um, the textbook accessibility, some of just the basic web navigation, some of the resources that you find at the module level, which with Reveal Math, instead of chapters, they're developed by modules. And then within the module, you'll find lessons. Um, we've amped up some practice, so great practice and assessments, and then wrap up in questions. Um, I've put this image on here because mm, in the way that things are today, 90% of the questions or I get are about synchronous and asynchronous learning. And I'm like, who thought that those words have become so um, important in my vocabulary now? And so uh, this is kind of an image that you'll see throughout the um, presentation. And whenever you see this, I'm thinking synchronous learning. I'm thinking either a meeting kind of like what we're doing right here in a webinar or a Zoom. And then asynchronous is kind of that independent learning whenever the students there um, doing this uh, independently, whether it's at home or, you know, and those types of things. So I just put these images on my slide just to kind of, you know, give ideas. Now, this is just my ideas. So, of course, um, you know what will work best in your classroom and ways to share, but just some thoughts on some of those um, ways to engage the students. So, brief, quick overview of Reveal Math to those of you that are brand new to it. Just know that Reveal Math is a print, digital, and uh, a blended hybrid program. So that um, within your your district, you could have received the print, which is a two volume print edition. Um, the students can do this 100% digital, but uh, most prefer that it be a hybrid. That it's a blended of print and and digital in the math program. So that's one of the key keys. Whoops. So student materials. Students receive a two volume interactive write in text. Now I get the question many times, why interactive write in text, even through Algebra 2? And that is because our research regularly shows that when students write in their math class, their concept understanding and their critical thinking skills improve. Um, one of the things that was mentioned is that I am a uh, foldables trainer, Dinah Zykes, and I can tell you those teachers that use that type of writing skill, those type of foldables, um, students you see an average of at least a 20% retention rate because 
they are. They're interacting. They're regularly engaging in writing in their math class. So it's the same way with these interactive write-in student additions. The Student Digital Center contains uh, the digital interactive student edition. The teacher has options to assign quizzes, resources, and assessments. Lesson content videos and fabulous e-tools. And then the teacher's edition. Within the teacher material, the teacher edition is another two-volume teacher edition. And there you'll find teacher notes, lesson pacing, suggestive questioning for each and every example, differentiation recommendations, easy reference to the student content, so you'll find that. And then in the Teacher Digital Center, there'll be customizable lesson plans, great interactive resources that many times are powered by WebSketch, which is um, the version of Geometer Sketchpad that that many of us are familiar with, um, digital teacher and student editions, assessment and reporting, and if you so choose, there's even a class calendar and gradebook all embedded within the teacher digital content. Um, many times I get questions about the assessment, so here's just some examples of the assessment embedded. There's diagnostic, there's formative, such as pre-test and homework, different forms of the homework. There's summative assessments, which include module test, as well as performance tasks. And then, of course, anything that's done digitally, you get reports. And within those reports, you'll find real-time class and student reporting, activity reports, and standards reports. So nice reporting and great data that you receive um, when students do do their practice or their assessments online. Now, that was a brief overview. Um, as mentioned earlier, we'll pause and see if there's any questions in the chat box about just the Reveal Math program, and then we're going to walk through a module and a lesson. I'm guessing we're good to go ahead and continue on, ladies? Yes, we're good. Okay, thank you. So within a module and a lesson, as I said, the layout is modular, and then you'll find the lessons. Each course consists of 10 to 12 modules, and then within each module, you'll have 5 to 10 lessons. So that's kind of the key makeup there. Now here's just a design that laid out just to kind of give you a, a plethora of resources that are available within the module. So to launch the module, ways to start the module, we'll include a pretest, a um, great activity called Ignite, which we'll explore in just a minute, as well as a video. Then we'll move into a continuous cycle of a lesson that is launch explore and develop, reflect and practice. Now within that lesson, you, the teacher, will also have additional resources to help differentiate. At the end of the module, there'll be different types of resources, including uh, performance tasks, dynamic model practice, a link to an adaptive program, Learn Smart, and module assessment. One other special piece embedded within the module is a formative assessment probe. This was written by one of our contributors, um, Cheryl Toby, and um, one of Cheryl's key things is she says, you know, to teach without misconceptions is just impossible. And so we want to make sure we address those students' misconceptions and we address them at point of views and they're not carried over from module to module or year to year so that students can really develop the key understandings of the mathematics. So this is kind of just a roadmap of a module, and we'll refer back to it, but I just think it kind of gives us a clear uh, view of how we're going to move forward. So 
So just in the teacher's level, of course, there's the table of contents that you'll see your titles, your lesson titles, your essential question there. And then if we look this as through a student view, that student view will also see that all important essential question. And then you'll also notice that there's something that's called, what will I learn? Place a check mark in the row that corresponds to how much you already know. You'll also notice that right here, I have a um, asynchronous symbol here, icon, because this is something that I think that students could do on their own. Now, they can do this in print, you know, they can put their little check marks, or know that the student edition is interactive, so they could go in and do it that way as well. So you'll have options for both ways to do this. As you move forward and you look at the teacher edition at the module level, there'll be the module goal, the key focus on the standards address, the coherence, the previous now and next, which has become more and more important in this type of uh, gap learning that maybe some of our students are experiencing. So I need to make sure um, what students know. And then of course the rigor. Um, throughout the module, we'll engage students to make sure they have all parts of conceptual understanding, the procedural skill and fluency, and the application. Probably one of the best parts about the module opener is the be sure to cover. So whenever you give students maybe that module pretest, you'll have uh, prerequisite skills for the module. And so this way, you can diagnose students for their readiness by seeing, okay, did they understand finding the absolute value of integers or key things like that. Um, as always, everybody's favorite is the suggested pacing guide. We do have the 45 minutes and the 90 minutes. And another key is McGraw-Hill is very considerate about making sure that there's time built in for review, assessment, and uh, pre-test. So many times, uh, if you're looking at pacing guides, you might not find that. So here's an example of a module pretest. This is what it looks like online. And anytime you see this icon throughout the program, this will mean that data, you can collect data. And you'll get that great data from the, from the student. Now, there have been some great new features that you can allow students more than one try, you can allow student extensions, or even reopen the assignments, which I'll share with you, some great ways to do that uh, later on. This, here's my icon. Once again, this is something that I would maybe pre-assign to students to have them do on their own before they either meet with me or virtually meet with me. For you, the teacher, um, there's another great activity that's at the beginning of the module, and that is the Ignite activity. Uh, this is something that you can choose to share out with your students. It is a Word document. So the design of the Ignite activity was, to, um, they were created by Dr. Ross Shaw, and he truly just wanted to create curiosity in the classroom to ensure that you get engage and challenge students with open-ended collaborative activities that develop a growth mindset and encourage students to protective struggle. So you'll see right here, I kind of have this set up as, yeah, the Ignite activity is so rich and robust, I would use part of it whenever I'm meeting with my students and then maybe part of it whenever they're on their own. So let's dive a little deeper into the Ignite activity. Um, just to refresh and mention, I did mention that it's a Word document. And the reason I love them so much being in a Word document is that teachers have really taken and personalized these. So they've made them theirs. For example, um, one of the Ignite activities talked about a swim team. And one of the schools I was in, they didn't have a swim team. So the teacher just changed the Ignite activity to a track and field team, and that just really helped make the students and made it more relatable to the students. So here's an Ignite. Um, I'm going to give everybody a minute to look at this. This is Yolanda and Harrison are playing a board game. The game board represents the current state after each player has drawn six cards. Harrison cannot believe he has drawn these cards shown and is still so far behind. So the first thing I'm going to ask you, and in the chat box, 
if you would just put either what do you notice or maybe what question could you ask. Okay, well, I'm going to give you guys some hints because I'm not seeing anything coming in at the moment. For example, we might notice that Harrison is using the lion game piece. Is currently behind Yolanda. She's using an elephant game piece. Harrison has drawn six cards, but we it's an unknown order. So he is currently seven spaces past the starting space. You guys kind of get the idea here. We can see this. Questions we could ask. In what order did Harrison originally draw the card so that he's only seven spaces past start? Is there only one order? Could he be further ahead or even further behind? What are some of the possible card instructions that Yolanda has drawn? So great questions. What do you notice? What did you wonder? I kind of call this a very, very um, low floor, high ceiling activity because every single one of my students has something that they can notice have some kind of question they could ask about this. Now within this, um, Dr. Shaw has also created some, qu some class questions. So the next part of this will be talk about it. Share your observations with a partner, and this may be where you know, like I said, in um, asynchronous learning they could phone a friend and talk about what they noticed and what kind of questions they could ask. And then be ready to share one of those with your class. Now, within the Ignite, you will receive a sample question um, to share with the class. I encourage you to use this question because he has researched it, and it is one that, that is a, uh, a really good, rich question to allow students to investigate. So here's our sample question. What is one way to arrange the order of the cards to result in Harrison's location? Is there more than one way? So that would be our class question. And then we would ask our students, how can you answer your question? What strategies can you use? Do you need to make some assumptions? If so, what are some of those assumptions that you need to make? So that's some of the key ways. Then I would let my students go out on their own and use any strategy to answer the questions, record their work, and then let's come back together and talk about those strategies. Now for those students that need more, there is always an extension. So you can always take and extend this. This Ignite activity is found at the beginning of the module, but I can see how you can work through this several times throughout the module. You can even give the whole class the extensions throughout there. So that's one way to engage at the beginning of a module is through the Ignite activity. You'll also notice the essential question, the Dynasike foldable, and a launch your model, module video. Within that, there'll just be different topics. And this one in particular, it has golf and temperature as a way to introduce integers. Um, I will give you another suggestion. Sometimes there's two or three topics, and maybe one of the topics just doesn't really appeal to my students. So I fast forward through whichever one and you know just make sure I, I try to pique their interest when using these module videos. At the module level for the teacher, one other key piece of information that you'll find there is great mindset matter tips, allowing students to ensure that they haven't learned it yet. What are some key ways to encourage them to build confidence whenever they are solving math problems, especially in front of their peers, so that you make the environment very safe, to include them in the conversation, and that you know mistakes are to the pathway of success. So that's another key at the beginning of the module. From the beginning of a module, then we'll move into a lesson. And at the lesson level, just as a reminder, we'll have that continued cycle of launch, explore and develop, and reflect and practice. 
So the instructional model, whoops, sorry about that, is um, organized, like I said, into three parts. There are going to be plenty of opportunities within each lesson for have individual, small group, and whole class activities. And then you'll have the option to leverage those customizable interactive presentations for any digital parts of the lesson that you want to use. So the three parts have different pieces within them. For example, I can launch the module with a warm-up, which will include some practice on prerequisite skills. But there's also something called a launch that's kind of like a little hook, another way to help engage the students. From there, I can move into explore, learn, and develop. Many of our lessons start with an explore activity, and this is where students can really start understanding the concept of the module, but letting them kind of, what I say, tinker with the mathematics. And then you move on to a more formal learn, and then examples and check. Last part of the module, uh, last part of the lesson structure is the exit ticket and practice. So you'll see I'll have, I have both of these because some of these parts, like for example, I would probably do this asynchronously as well as this, and then this part in here, the learn, and some of the examples in check, I would want to do either face-to-face -face or in some type of meeting with my students. Here is the teacher edition. So you'll see that you'll find very explicit instructions, including the lesson goal the suggested pacing, the focus, the coherence, and then check out the rigor here. Within every lesson, you'll find a conceptual bridge. Let me just take a moment and read this to you. In this lesson, students draw on their knowledge of integers and subtraction to develop understanding of and build fluency in subtraction. They will gain an understanding of finding the distance between two integers, and then they'll apply their knowledge in finding distance of real world, pro of real world problems. So you'll see how we move from that conceptual understanding into helping students build fluency, and then the application. And many times this is found throughout each and every lesson. Now that's a lot. So notice, I kind of went over it kind of quickly, but within that suggested pacing, it was three 45-minute periods. So there was a lot to cover in, in this particular lesson. Another key in every single lesson, there is a language development handbook page correlated to every lesson. Within that language development handbook page, you'll find excellent tips and suggestions to help build English language proficiency which I think mathematics is a whole language within its own, and so students um, all need help in developing the language of mathematics. So an excellent resource um, to be paired and used with this, uh, your students. Now, for your students, they'll see the lesson goal, and then, like I said, you'll have a choice. This is something you can either push out to students digitally or you could project, if you are um, with the whole class, of the warm-up. So there, there's an example of one way, prerequisite skills. Remember, we're going to talk about integers today. So we're, this is just prerequisite skills on subtraction. Or maybe we just want to launch it with something a little more interesting. So we want to talk about um, on when, when would you actually use subtracting integers. So there would be an, in, an infographic, and this is Miss Inta Jersey, the most interesting woman in the world. So just some type of little infographic, maybe a quick video or something to gain the student's interest to launch the lesson. It's your choice on how you choose to do it. For the student pages, they do not see the warm-up or the launch. This is what they see in their print. So you, the teacher, have to push out either digitally the, the launch information to them um, or, or, like I said, do it in class. So it begins with an I can statement. And then as we, as we move from the I can statement, we'll move into the explore and develop. This is where 
we go online and we ask students to really, as I said, explore, tinker with the mathematics. So in this particular one, it tells the students that they will have algebra tiles to model, model subtraction of integers. Now, as we all know, algebra tiles can also be a hands-on manipulative. So there's also going to be suggested ways if the students don't have devices, or if you do want to do this hands-on, there'll be suggestions in um, that too. But I suggest that if students have the capability, you let them discover this, maybe either on their own or with a caregiver at home or a partner from school. Maybe, like I said, they can phone a friend and they can talk about this explore activity. Here's an example of what it looks like online. We'll always begin with the inquiry question. So how can you use algebra tiles to model subtraction? From there, we'll actually give them the algebra tiles and they can drag and drop and go in and, and figure out how to solve the problem. Then we'll even give them a little video about watching and solving algebra tiles and encourage them to talk about it. So here's a brief clip of the video. Now I have to go ahead and say this. I recorded this and so it sounds a little tunnelly. Your video will not sound this way. Use algebra tiles to subtract integers. Use algebra tiles to evaluate negative 8 minus negative 2. Are you able to hear that video? Use algebra tiles to subtract integers. Yes. Okay, because sometimes it won't come through. <laughs> Thank you. Here, we'll fast forward a little bit. Negative 8 minus negative 2 equals negative 6. Use algebra tiles to evaluate 4 minus negative 3. That's very interesting, Christy. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, the cool thing is, it's like I could pause it, you know, I could let students use that in, in ways, and it's going to give them different scenarios. Um, it's also awesome for caregivers, you know, I mean, like, oh my gosh, it's been years since I had to subtract algebra, <laughs> I had to subtract integers. <laughs> Help me out just a little bit, right? So you'll find key resources there um, throughout. Then, of course, you'll continue that. We'll encourage those students to um, go in and be able to um, subtract with the algebra tiles and uh, it, so it just really guides students. You'll see there's about seven or eight slides that are just going to guide through students step by step of different scenarios of subtracting integers. Then it'll continue to ask students, you know, as we know, mathematics is all about patterns. So what patterns have you observed? What are some of the signs? What are some different ones? You know, what, what happened here? And it'll always lead students back to the inquiry question. Now, throughout these slides, you'll notice that you'll see type your answer here, record your expression. You, like I said, you can do this online and you could look, if you assign this, you could look and see exactly what the um, students have done actually. So you'll be able to find all this developed um, throughout the mathematics. As I did mention earlier, there is also a recording sheet and you could do this activity in print. Once again, it's a Word document, so it's really nice. Students, you could, you know, assign it out to them. They could download it. They can type on it. They could upload it, send it back to you. Um, so a great thing in these unprecedented times that we never thought we might be in, uh, this asynchronous learning with our students. So really allowing students to do that throughout the mathematics. For you, the teacher, you'll find very, very explicit directions on the explore. It'll go through, give you exactly what are we doing here, what part of rigor, the conceptual understanding. What's the objective of this? We want students to use algebra tiles to explore. What are some ideas for use? As I said, here it is. What if my students don't have devices? You'll have different um, suggestions there as well. Then there'll be a quick summary of the activity as well as the answer to the inquiry question. It'll go slide by slide. Hey, what is in this slide show? Well, in slide four, there's a math discourse question. 
Here are some examples of the slides. Many of the slides are interactive and ask students to drag and drop. On slide three, there is a video to watch. So in the teacher's edition, you'll be able to flip through and see exactly what's there. Or of course, you can look at it online too, which we'll go on and um, do that in just a minute. Now, as students move forward from the Explore activity, and we encourage them to do that um, on their own, if we're in a synchronous, asynchronous environment, then we'll move to something that we all want to have a meeting about, and that is the learn. So this is the part, either if I've got a face-to-face -face or in some type of Zoom or webinar meeting, this is where I'd really encourage you to use the learn part of the program. So we're, today you've talked about subtraction. Now let's see about what you've learned and how can we subtract integers? Well, one way we did it was through algebra tiles. Now we're going to talk about using number lines. The learn will be explicit instructions. Of course, every part of the learn that they see in print, they'll see digitally, but know that digitally it will become a little more interactive. Throughout every lesson, we encourage that math discourse and um, having students think about it and talk about the mathematics. Now, once again, for you, the teacher, you're going to see those explicit directions within the teacher's edition, and then you'll even see a student page, a small student page within there. So you'll find that, and then here are those instructions. What part of the uh, rigor are we concentrating on? Still the conceptual understanding. What is the objective of the learn? What are some of the mathematical practices that we're really going to emphasize within this learn? And those online additional teaching notes. Um, throughout the lesson, there'll be differentiation activities to help students better understand the mathematics. And then, of course, example. In the student and teacher edition, you'll find example after example. Now, whenever the students go online to do the examples, many times they become more interactive. <coughs> so you'll see right here, students are going to use a number line, and if they were in print, they could just write on this and, and do it there. If they're online, they'll be able to go in and interact with it there. Um, there will be several methods many times introduced and always a check. Additionally, for every example in print, there is an extra example online. So you'll have that available. After every example or in high school, every two or three examples, there's a quick check. So this is what a quick check looks like. It's usually just one problem. Students will go in and answer the question. Um, you'll get that real, if you assign this, you get that really quick piece of formative assessment. So you'll see, are we ready to move forward and go on? As I mentioned, in high school, Algebra 1, Geometry, and Algebra 2, the checks are not embedded in the examples, but or individual resources after several examples. So here's my example, here's my extra example, and I may go through several, and then I would find that quick check. Where in middle school, there would be this little bitty icon would be in every single one of these examples. So every other, not the extra examples, but in every example. And that's just a little bit of a differentiation between the middle school and the high school program. Um, the question I get a lot is, do you uh, need to um, assign every single one of those examples so I can get that data? I say that's on your individual basis. That's, you know, some, some lessons I may need to. Other lessons I may feel confident and, and just assign a few. Online, what does that extra example look like? Well, here it is. And it does give students the opportunity to do this and do a quick check, and they could reset it and um, practice and, and try again until they uh, are successful. For you, the teacher, you're going to get, once again, that great instruction right here 
embedded throughout the teacher's editions. The same type of things you're going to see that we saw at the module and at the beginning of the lesson. Also, you'll find questions for math discourse. And once again, that lesson goal, I just want to take you through that we moved from a launch to an explore and then to a learn with all different types of examples. So I'm going to pause here and see if we have any quick questions before I move forward. If you have any questions for Christy, please let us know and we can pause and we can just go through them now. Please type them in the Q&A box or in the chat box. I guess we're all good. Okay, thank you so much. So I um, have worked through, like I said, just kind of a recap to give you all this. And um, we've worked through these examples. And then I want you to look at how these examples developed. So we moved from here, we talked about using algebra tiles. Now we move to a number line. We're gonna move more abstractly. Now just subtract them and then even evaluate an expression. So starting to apply the idea of subtraction. Um, I just, as a reminder, they're in print and they're online, and then you'll have those additional examples online. Now, this lesson is rather long. We're not gonna go through the rest of it, but I just wanna show you that then you would have, even in this lesson, a second explorer and a learn, and then more examples. At the end of just about every lesson, you will find ways to apply the mathematics. So we'll move students from conceptual understanding through fluency and then through application. With middle school, every single lesson ends with an apply example. And within that apply example, it will have um, what I call um, a, a routine. And within that routine, there's even a math language routine of three read. So the first step is, what is the task? And it will ask students to read the problem three times. So embedded routine here, which I think is really important to help students. You know, first time, describe the context. Second time, what mathematics do you see? And then that third time, you know, what are you wondering about? Uh, then, of course, we'll ask students how they can approach the task, what are some strategies they can use. We'll encourage them to solve the problem with their strategy. And then last but not least, always, is your answer reasonable? And write about it. How can you um, write an argument that would you could make sure that you're to defend your solution? Once again, for you, the teacher, we are going to give you great instructions. We're also going to help you whenever it comes to those students that you see those signs of non-productive struggle. So what are some questions that I might be able to ask? Because we know that students begin to feel frustrated and so maybe there's some um, ways, alternative approaches to, to think of this problem and what are some ways that we can do that within the program. So we'll move from there all the way we've explored and developed. Remember, this was kind of a rather long lesson that Christy chose here. And then we'll go into our reflect and practice. And within our reflect and practice, that's whenever I would come back and encourage asynchronous learning and you'll find for every single lesson an exit ticket. Many times they refer back to that launch. So remember we had that infographic about the most interesting woman in the world and we were talking about highest and lowest point. Here's another piece that we could discuss. And then of course practice. You're going to find plenty of practice. Now you're going to find the print practice and within the print, one of the key things that's been helpful is the reference back to the example. So 
um, once again, if they're doing this at home and they need a little help, they can refer back to the examples that uh, are in the book for them. That is what we call practice form A or just practice. But as I said, you'll also have other forms available online. Whenever you look at this in their teacher's edition, you'll be able to see, you don't have to go online to see the exit ticket, you'll be able to see that. And then you'll also find resources to assess and differentiate. So if I were using those data checks throughout, what are some things that I can do with my students? What if they're just over the top and they you know, scored 90%? Here's one suggestion. If they're just average, there are some other suggestions. And then what if they need that extra help? Now, throughout this, you'll notice that Alex was mentioned. Alex is another personalized learning program that is available through McGraw-Hill. It is, um, it works in conjunction, but it is a separate uh, cost to that. So I just like to, to point that out, that it is available uh, there. In the homework and practice section in the teacher's edition, you'll have um, reference to the other forms of practice. I will tell you online, we have renamed practice form B to reinforcement and practice form C to, um, oh, I just lost it, uh, apply. I, something in apply. Uh, we'll, we'll go online and look at that. Um, DOK level is also another key important here. So within our assessment exercises, our practice exercise, we have labeled which level of DOK the problems relate to. So you can even help your students um, to encourage that higher level thinking. Of course, you'll find also common misconceptions there. So, I want to pause and for the majority of the rest of our time together, I'm going to go online. But as always, I want to take a minute as I transition to online to see if there were any questions that came up. Okay, I think we're going to keep moving. So this is a uh, Reveal Math course. Uh, we might need to remind you guys of that username and password that we said at the beginning. So um, if you need that, just ask in the chat box and somebody will put that username and password in for you. And basically one of the key things to know is that Many times online, things were set up as courses. And now with McGraw-Hill, your each and every class will have a specific uh, launch pad. So everything is set up by class this, uh, versus by course. Here within the dashboard, some of the things I want to draw your attention to is you'll have um, news and updates. Like I said, we just updated those practice problems, we renamed those. So you'll find news, news and updates there. Um, our time is running is already running short today. And so there's also a great clickable digital tour here. There is a direct link to Desmos. And then there's the interactive books. Now, there is the interactive books that are in volume one and volume two. And these are similar to what the students see in print. But I want to show it to you. And so you can see that these become interactive because I could go in and I can um, grab a math editor. I can just type in an answer here. And it allowed me to accept that value. 
go here. And add that into my book. It also has a read aloud feature. And something that's super cool is right up here, there's learning tools. So say, for example, we were just got through, you know, use any strategy, a bar diagram, a number line, a ratio table. So as a student, I just needed to go ahead and look at one of those tools. Or I kind of just even needed, I, I, in my things, I just maybe needed a little scratch pad. So I could go come in here and I could just use my numbers, use a scratch pad here, um, whatever I was doing to um, work on a particular problem. Now, not only is this, do you see these tools here, but this little plus sign also gives students general tools, such as a number line. I wanted to use a number line as my strategy. There's also algebraic tools, geometry tools, number sense tools, functions. So tons of tools for students to use. Now, I had it opened up in a really small um, window, but students could open it up even uh, bigger or put it in a separate window. There is a scientific calculator also right here. Linked. So the students have a read aloud feature, and this is what it looks like as their interactive book, kind of just like if they were doing it in, in their print. Now, by popular demand, something that teachers asked for was the student edition ebook. So, what does it look like exactly? You know, what does my ebook look like if I wanted to project that? So, that's what this extra ebook is. This is exactly what the students see. In print, let me just open it up. But you'll see it's not interactive. Like I can't type in it, I can't, it's just exactly what a student would see. So, like this is their print version of the book. The nice thing about this is that I can use my zoom feature and I can zoom in here. So if I want to say, okay, everybody, hey, let's make sure we're all in the same lesson together and those particular keys. There is still those learning tools here. So even if I wanted to use this and project and use those learning tools, this would be another excellent teaching aid. And then for you, the teacher over here, this is your teacher's edition. On the left-hand side, you have a menu that includes um, assignments and assessments. Those are two of the key pieces over here. This where do you want to go allows you to browse your course and I encourage you to browse the program overview where you'll find um, not only that clickable digital tour but you'll find other great resources and in getting started including some welcome overviews and some quick start and digital guides and even a letter to send home to the family. So one of our esteemed authors, uh, Kathy Seeley, it has some great videos in here to talk about the philosophy and welcoming of McGraw-Hill. The other is program resources, course material. And within the course material, you will find excellent support here, including professional learning resources that um, talk about the why behind the mathematics. These are excellent uh, presentations. Sometimes I even share those with my students. And then um, more information on the IGNITE and the formative assessment probes, which we really didn't talk a whole, whole lot about but you'll find that information right here under professional learning resources. Of course, you'll find course assessments, great student videos, and um, a great partnership with Eureka Comics, so some uh, graphic novels that introduce some of the key math concepts found within the course. From here, I'm going to do program resources and I'm going to open up a module. And I was in module three, operations with integers. 
and I was in lesson two. So let's look at the module level information first and see how those folders change. So within the module, there's ways to launch, there's ways to review and assess, and then there's also additional resources. Launch is where you'd find that Great Ignite activity, the module pretest, the video, and then review and assess is where you'd find all your summative assessments for your module and that fantastic assessment probe. Now, my folders are going to change as I move from a module into a lesson. So now I'm going to go to lesson two, where I showed you everything in print and where you have it in print. Now, here are your folders, your launch, explore and develop, reflect and practice, and additional resources. Something you may have noticed throughout is teacher added resources. At any point, you can always go in and add, maybe you've made a quick video, or maybe you want to add a particular file from your computer or an external web link. You can add that and even add it to your student presentation if you so choose. Under launch, just like we saw, there's the warm up, there's ways to launch the lesson, also your standards and any key vocabulary. Um, some of these we've defaulted to go ahead and be visible to the student, so you don't have to push it out to the student page, it's just there. But you can, like say I want this to be visible to the student, I can add and show the content. I can also add it to my calendar or assign it. So very easy ways to do that. Under Explore and Develop, that's where you'll find your different activities, um, your explorers, your examples, and your uh, additional examples. All key resources there. Practice and reflect. Exit ticket, your different forms of practice here. One of the nice things that McGraw-Hill did is here you've got the practice in print. Here it is available digitally. But if you need it as a Word document, we've also put that right there for you. A key new piece that was added was extra practice for you guys. So that's a nice um, piece, extra practice problem. And then this eSolutions manual is the step-by-step -step answer keys for each and every, exam, uh, every practice problem. So this is a great teacher resource for you too. There'll be other ways to collect data, including a spiral review. And this pull it all together is kind of like some, a, a quiz that you'll find after two or three resources. Under additional resources is where you find that great place to differentiate, including the language development handbook. I talked about that. Here's just an example of one page. A lot of times it's some type of graphic organizer. Here we want students to be able to do the flow chart of subtracting integers, so an excellent resource. And then another key resource here is you'll find some review and some um, extensions. But through Algebra 1, you will find this resource called Take Another Look. And I share this with you because last spring I was working with a group of teachers outside of Florida, and they said, hey, Chris, can we call the take another look, take a first peek? And I was like, yeah, sure. Um, because what they were doing in this remote learning environment, they were assigning this to their students um, before they even came to class. Because this is basically just another way to introduce integers. So, you know, we talked about that explore activity that introduced integers um, and with algebra tiles, well, I could maybe introduce integers um, right here by using a number line. You'll see that this says, watch to learn how to subtract integers to solve a temperature problem. Now, a student may say, oh, I don't even know what the word integer is. So there's got an interactive glossary. 
but that they could go in and see that. Oops. And I clicked the wrong page there. Sorry about that. And then whenever they get to the next slide, Well, maybe, Christy. I always say the great thing about this is I can't break it. I can always just close out and open it back up. And usually it goes back up. There we go. And helps me out here. Um, things are even color coded on here as students move forward and walk through. So it's a great first peek at a application problem or, or like I said, or a reteaching activity. So that's a lot of information at the lesson and unit level. Um, what I like to do is give everyone a chance to, I'm going to pause for about five minutes, so about 12 after the hour, and ask you to take a minute. And if you don't know the username and password, here it is, my.mheducation.com. Go to Reveal Math Demo MHE, um, and then the password is MHE2020Math, and ask any questions in the chat box or maybe share an aha moment with us from that. So guys, I'm going to try to be quiet for five minutes and uh, or let me know if there's any questions. Christy, a few questions have come up. Yes, ma'am. Okay, great. So one of them is you spoke about um, going online. So the online will show the visual animation on how to stop step by step. I think this is the video that you were talking about. Yes, yes. So like underneath the dashboard, you'll find that clickable digital tour, which is very nice. Or so it, solves it, it solves the problem as well, step by step. Oh, for the problem itself. Yes, okay, whoops. Let me go back. So let's open up an example. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. And yes, so whenever the student, here's example one. And we'll go through it. So here's the first, and you'll see how it will solve the problem step by step. So ask the students. Thank you. Sure. And notice these little dots right here, like this takes them through. So here's step one, write the equation. Step two, subtract negative seven, add, and then I, I can't move forward until I do. <laughs> Other questions? Uh, will the option of multiple tries cut down students' grade for every single attempt? No. Um, so if you go in underneath assignment and you either um, you let them you reopen it, then it'll take that last uh, that last grade. So excellent question. Okay, great. The other one is the same video that you showed. It shows how to solve the each problem. Correct, McGraw. The, I, I'm not sure how this, how what you mean, Julie. It says McGraw Hill shows how to solve the each problem. I think it's the platform shows how to solve the each problem. Hello. Yeah. So, wait. So yeah, I mean like. The examples go through to show how to, how to solve each problem like we just did, 
And mm -hmm. then um, let me show you the e-solution. Maybe that's, that's what we're looking at. But before we, I, I kind of jumped back a little bit. After a student submitted an assignment and see like this one right here, Christy Demo made a four out of 22. And so I might want to reopen that and tell her to go back and try again. And then if I did, she would lose that score four out of 22. Now, this one, Christy Demo, that hadn't started, I can't reopen the assignment, but what I can do is give an extension and say, hey, I know maybe, you know, something happened and you didn't do this. I'm giving you an extension to try this assignment again. Mm, makes sense. And one of the question is, is there any differentiation in reveal maps? Yes, so there's tons of differentiation. Remember underneath that um, uh, additional resources, this is where you can do great differentiation. Uh, this language development handbook is one of my favorites. Um, there'll also be those enrichment and those review activities and then these, these take another look. So excellent there to help differentiate. And then I just think basically within the explore and develop, you'll know your students. So some of them may need these extra examples, some of them may not. You know, so you'll have great opportunities to differentiate throughout the year. Thank you so much. That's all so far. If anyone has any other questions, please let us know and we can ask it, ask Christy towards the end. Thank you so much, Christy. Sure. Um, so I talked a lot about this and maybe some of you are still exploring, but also know that you have up here on the right a pre-built presentation. So you may have noticed whenever you're looking in here that you know some of it was already added to the presentation, and that's what's our, that's what's up here. So it's kind of like a slideshow, of, of, but it's much more interactive here as a pre-built presentation. Um, mine starts with launch the lesson, so you'll see that infographic, and then it'll move in to the standards and the vocabulary. The I can statement will be there. And um, this one also, I put in the explore recording sheet because what I have found um, that many times students, it just helps them as a reminder, hey, I sent you this. I want you to go ahead and have this printed out, you know, to use through the activity. You'll notice on the bottom right hand side here, I have this open tray so I can move through any of the problems, the practice problems, anything I want to see, I can move through and go to those particular examples throughout the lesson. Um, I also have those learning aids that are available to me at the um, any time within the presentation. Now. Real quickly, I want to share with you that there's three ways to make assignments. There's through just adding an assignment at any point here, like this practice and reflect. I want to assign this practice. I can just do it right here from the page. It'll give me um, quick resources, quick information, and I can just click assign and boom, it's done. I also can make assignments through the assignments tab. And then I like to remind people that our assessments, assessments is another excellent way to make assignments. And it's not just assessments. It is really, really every single practice problem. So here is my practice bank for module one. And whenever I open that up, you will find if I click on this ribbon, it's just going to alphabetize them for me. So it just puts them in, in alphabetical order. You'll find the extra practice, the practice, the reason and apply, and the reinforcement for every single um, lesson right here. There is also just the, all these problems folded up into one practice bank. And then another super cool feature that McGraw-Hill has is the dynamic module practice. So this is with algorithmically generated, so it allows students um, to practice the same concept 
but with different numbers. So it's an excellent way to be able to um, use the mathematics. So we've talked a lot about the lesson. And in our very short time that we have left together, I want to share with you a little bit about the module close. Within the module close is where you find the performance task, that dynamic ma uh, module practice, learn smart, which is an adaptive test practice, and then those different types of module assessments. Um, for the student, there's going to be a fantastic page to reflect on the essential question. McGraw-Hill develops that same essential question throughout the entire um, chap lesson module. We do not change it lesson for lesson. So now, once again, it allows students to reflect on their learning of this module. This is another excellent opportunity for any student. They can draw here, they can write here. So everybody has the opportunity to answer that essential question. Performance tasks are available. They are a Word document and are usually encouraged to do in print. And of course, you, the teacher, will have a rubric that goes along with that. Um, Learn Smart is our adaptive and personalized practice really designed for test preparation. It totally focuses on what a student knows and then helps students practice on what they're most likely to forget. It's very adaptive. It gives students a chance to choose their learning mission. It not only will measure their correctness, but also the student's confidence as they move forward within the um, lesson. Learn Smart is a digital asset that is available at the module level. Here's the other examples of end of module assessments. You'll have different forms of there and um, key ways. I, I thought I had a dynamic. I'll go back in and show you the dynamic. So as I said, our goals were today is we wanted to make sure that we left you with the lesson structure, many features of the lesson, and then also um, some of the print and digital material. I am going to go back online and um, share with you a little bit of the dynamic real quick since I, I thought I had a slide with that. But as I do that, I'll also make sure that we entertain any questions that may have popped up. Christy, we've received a few questions. Yes. Okay, so one of them is, um, can I download any of the content offline? So there is some that you can um, download if you look um, any of the Word documents, of, you know, the MS Word documents that are at the uh, lesson level, you can definitely do that. Um, but as far as the presentations, you know, traditionally a lot of people were used to presentations and PowerPoints. Those are not av available to um, download because of the, the just the interactive nature. But um, there are some of the, the worksheets and resources. Um, okay. Ironically, right here underneath assessments, you can create your own assessment and then have it, you know, have it ready to print out and it will just show up right here in your download. Okay. And can we see the learning aids? Yes. So that's exactly, that's a great thing to go to right now. We're going to go to um, roster. And underneath roster, probably one of the coolest things is that you can emulate a student. And so I just made a quick assignment. So I'm going to go in and emulate this student. Now you do have to be careful because whenever you emulate a student, you're, you're going in as that student. So anything you do will be recorded as if you are that student. So let me get there. Here's my reminder that I'm in emulation mode. So you'll see right now I've got some assignments to do. I can also look over here underneath assignments and I can see a to-do list and I can also see my past work. 
So I want to do this module, dynamic module practice. And you as a teacher have the option of turning on and off those learning aids, you know, giving them extra chances to choose the problem, or I mean to check the problem or not, and those types of things. They're defaulted to already be on. So like here's my question number one. Right here, this would say, hey, do you need help with this? If you do, I can show the answer. Um, keep in mind, you won't be able to uh, retry the same problem after seeing the answer. You know how kids are, like they want to see, just tell me what the answer is, the answer to, just tell it to me so I can go back and do it again. So like, here's the answer. All right, so I viewed it, and now whenever I go back to the question, okay, I'm ready to try another. I'm not going to get the same question. So, my teacher says whenever I don't know the answer to put in two, right, you'll notice as I put things in, there was also some aids here that popped up. Now I can check the answer. It's going to tell me it's incorrect. I have two tries left. Please try again. You know, in seven minutes an hour, read two fifths of chapter. What is her rate per hour? Let's just say I want to put two thirds here because it gave me that. You know, I'm just acting like a kiddo here. Hmm. Still, I need maybe some more help with this. I could show an answer. Guess what's going to happen whenever I show the answer? After I see the explanation. So, oh, I've got to divide here. Go back to the question and, and try another. I can say I'm done and I want to move on to my next question. Question number two, here we go. A printer is printed job, eight photos. It takes the printer four minutes, complete the table. You know, so if it's in eight photos in four minutes, what can we talk about that? Well, that would be what? Two photos per minute. So if it's six minutes, it would be 12 here. Let's see how I did. All right, correct. And I can move forward. You guys are, I think, kind of getting the idea. You know, I played around with that first one. The next one I just zoomed on. So now I can move to the next question. I can go in. I can see exactly. Um, this one is multiple choice. Um, oops, I didn't fill in the empty boxes. I can move on. Um, so it's going to remind me of different things to do here. Then at the end, you can submit your assignment. Whenever you submit your assignment, this is going to tell me, hey, are you sure you want to submit that? You've got a lot of incomplete questions. If I want to jump to any of those, I could. Just for time's sake, I'm going to submit the assignment. It's going to auto score it. I can view my score details. Probably tell me I did not do very well on it and say I forgot to view my details, you'll see that it popped up here in grades. So now as a student, I can go back and view it. And depending on the settings, did I just want them to see the score or did I allow them to see more of the details? The way I had it set up, I just let them see the score of it. So there it is. Now I'm going to exit out of this emulation because I know we're, we're running short on time and there might be a few more questions. And I just want to show, share with you what the teacher sees from that. So we just emulated that. Okay, I had made that assignment. Now I go up here to assignments. 
and you'll see that one out of 13 submitted it. I click in here. Now I can view the score sheet. And the cool thing is, is it's going to share with me all the different attempts. Remember, I attempted this twice, so I wanted to see what the first attempt was, what was my second attempt, and it'll show that to me throughout. If I wanted to just look at everybody's questions number two, I can use that drop-down menu and go through there and see. So it's a very, very um, dynamic, quick, and I'll give you great data on your students if you do sign things um, online. Okay, we have, what, four minutes? Time flew this morning, didn't it? Yes, we do. That was a very thorough demo and presentation. Thank you, Christine. Well, thank you all. But, um, you know, I'll stay on the line for a few more minutes and answer any questions that you have, but I also respect your time. So thank you so much for having me today. Thank you. If anyone has any questions, please let us know. Uh, type them in the Q&A box. We've got one, Christy, which says, oh, we've got a couple of them. Sorry, I just saw the sheet. Uh, what platform do students use to fill out assignments so it can be automatically graded? Good question, Julie. So it, it's all in the McGraw-Hill platform. So uh, my.mhe, it's all, it's, you know, it's, um, it's all web-based and run on our own platform. Now you can, um, and many teachers do, and there are some videos on this in our getting started. If you wanted to, you can link it to your Google Classroom and share it with that, but it's automatically really going to send students back and to collect the data and do it through this platform. Thank you. And uh, how many math lessons should my students take weekly? I think oh, this is about spacing. We, this is what? About pacing? Yeah, so look at the pacing guide at the beginning of the um, module, but also know that um, actually I have a meeting this morning that we are talking about um, some distance and, and hybrid learning situations. So know that you'll probably find some more additional resources. I'm going to guess right in here that McGraw Hill is going to put to give you some ideas about pacing if you are doing some synchronous, asynchronous learning in the distance learning. But um, generally, the lessons are um, two to three 45-minute class periods. Okay, thank you. And another one is, do students do their assignment using WebEx so McGraw-Hill can record the grades? Well, you have a teacher account and then your students are linked. You have that roster and your students are linked to your teacher account. And then, yes, if they do anything that has those data icons on it um, or through this assessment, if you make any assignments or any of their practice through their assessment, then they um, will be automatically graded and recorded to you. Thank you. And um, I guess that's all the questions we have for today. Um, one more quick thing. I just want to go back to dashboard and tell you that underneath program resources, course material, I just encourage you that to um, watch some of these under professional learning. There are some, some, some great videos on getting started and key uh, pieces there. And, um, oh, wait, uh, maybe it's welcome to reveal to, um, they're putting, well, you've got some digital walkthrough, but they're also putting some, some videos here just more specifically about assignments and assessment and overviews there, um, I guess, coming soon. So thank you. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, we've covered the Q&A and uh, 
And I guess uh, we have repeat sessions, by, wait, this is a repeat session. We have multiple back to school sessions for grade six to eight. Uh, I'm just gonna drop the link in, so back to school support and resources that you can register for our sessions that are next week. I'll drop the link so you can have a look at them and you can register for as many as you want. Um, as my colleague Afsana mentioned, we will be sharing the recording of this webinar. Um, we will be sharing the recording of this webinar with you by in a week's time. You should also have the option to download the certificate in the same email. So you'll receive an email with the recording of the webinar as well as as well as the certificate option to download that. And if you have any other questions, please feel free to get in touch with us on the email that's shown on your screen. Or you can also get in touch with us through on our social channels. And thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. Everybody have a great day. Thank you, Christy. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.